TextFootball.com. This week, there are 26 games in the state where teams in Texas are playing basically the world or anybody outside the state. And one of them that is very, very interesting is Pulaski from Little Rock, Arkansas, who's taken on Highland Park in Highland Park. Now, the Scots, they haven't lost a game since 1998 at home. That is an 84-game winning streak. Pulaski is a crazy school. They got a guy that used to coach in Texas, so he knows a little bit about it in the Carrollton Farmers Branch area. But this is a guy who never punts. He does onside <laughs> kicks every time he scores. They've won four titles, and they scared the heck out of the Scots last year. Well, they, they should. I mean, that's scary when, you, when you've got a guy who, who doesn't play by the rules, you know what I mean, where you expect to get the ball back if you force a fourth down. That puts more pressure on the other team. That said, uh, if, if you read TexasFootball.com, you know that, that Texas teams have, have had a lot of success against teams from out of state. Now, something like a 61, 62% winning percentage. That's the way it goes. That's because Texas High School football is the deepest and the best in, in the state but, or in the nation. But, Coach, you know, we were talking before this about uh, a lot of these games. You know, you saw last week with Ewell's Trinity taking down De La Salle out of California. Uh, that game was televised. That game's on TV. And I wonder, from a coaching perspective, have, have you ever coached in a game that was, or been involved in a game that was televised? And how do you, how do you get your kids to say, hey, calm down, it's just another game, when there are TV cameras all over the place? Well, the television games, and ironically, sound like Carol and Denton Ryan did the first uh, televised, national televised game years ago. And there are three factors in there. First is the week of the game. You're doing uh, 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 interviews. They want to interview your key players. They want to interview the coaches. So it, you get a little out of your rhythm during the week as far as all of the things that are involved in a television game. Then you get into start times. In, in Texas, you've got to play on Thursday or Saturday. UIL won't play, let you play on Friday. So you've got to get off schedule there. Then the television may want to start at 7.05 or 7.10 or you're not used to that. 8 o'clock with the Eulis Trinity game. Yes, 8 o'clock. And then the third thing that really disrupts the game are the commercials. You can be driving the ball. You've got the defense off balance. You feel like it doesn't matter what you're calling. Man, it's clicking. You, you've got them going inside, outside, and so on. And then suddenly... The referee blows the whistle, and we've got a timeout for two minutes. Yeah. The defense regroups. They get their breath back, and you're going as a coach, oh, my gosh, we just killed our drive right there. So there are some handicaps to it. But, you know, you, you mentioned it, that the, the commercial breaks, obviously, you know, a uh, necessary part of doing a, t a television uh, show or tele televised game. But what I think is super interesting about that is, is with so many offenses now that are dictated on pace, with wearing down an opponent, if you give them five, eight free timeouts every half, all of a sudden, you know, maybe your pace, maybe your pacing doesn't doesn't have the same effect that you expect it to. Oh, I think you get that in the college level too, mm -hmm. with the Baylor's and the people that want a high tempo game, Oregon, all of those people, and suddenly you got the timeouts. Mm -hmm. It kills part of your strategy. There's no doubt. Yeah, guys.